Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to be building another 1 16th scale model. This one's from Trumpeter. It's the um, multi-gun motor carriage M16. Just recently built the 1 16th Tacon Jeep. So I thought I'll continue the theme and finally build this one. I notice you get the uh, actual hinges for the door and the uh, engine cover. So you actually get um, metal hinges. I think that's a vinyl. There's no um, embossed name or anything on the sidewall and with the tracks they're vinyl get the uh, join them with the pins the drive wheels painting guide it's pretty basic that's the engine Looks quite the uh, detail. Front wheels. These are the uh, four M two fifty calibers. These are the uh, roller wheels. The main part and front engine. Uh, the cabin. And this bit here, the back bit, is two parts. You get an idea of the size of it. And you get these two caricature looking, very comical looking. These are made out of vinyl as well. This one's got a smoke in his hand. These are the doors. I might try and um, the driver door here, cut this one here. So this top bit's folded down. Part of the uh, gun turret. Oh, these are the hinges here. Yeah. Okay. There's 18 hinges there. The metal chain. These are uh, photo edge parts for the, I think these would be for the jerry can holders, to hold the jerry cans in. And an assortment of screws. Well, these are the uh, these go on the roller on the uh, roller wheels. There's a rubber. There's jerry cans. 
that's good the way they've uh, cast these because you don't have to worry about the seam line so you don't have to muck around getting rid of that seam line down the middle there cartridge canisters quite a few, quite a few of those eight of those photo etch parts And here's the uh, chassis, this is made out of metal. It's already, uh, it's already coloured too. I'm going to have to paint it anyway. Uh, Okay, I've been working on the engine, done a few modifications, uh, I've pre-drilled holes for the um, fuel lines, vacuum lines or whatever. I've uh, modified the uh, crankshaft pulley here. So it would line up with the um, generator and the fuel pump pulleys here because I've got some rubber bands for the f for the uh, fan belt so I'll put that around there because the orig original one wasn't lining up with these pulleys so I've just uh, made this one like that You can see it line that these line up with that now, so I can put the rubber bands around there. Uh, I've modified the solenoid, make it look a bit better, and I'm working on the distributor. So I've got, I've got to drill seven holes in there six for the spark plug leads and one for the solenoid lead i've drilled a hole here in the carburetor for the uh, pcv and i've modified the uh, radiator <coughs> i've used uh, some micro mesh that i've had left over put some i'll put some in the back in the front because this this is going to be visible through the front louvers rather than just have a blank piece of plastic so that's the uh, cowling that goes on the back so when I paint all that I'll put some weathering and some rust streaks down the uh, radiator there so a funny thing happened I was trying to put the engine in like that and I had to, as I spread the uh, chassis apart this snapped right off like a chicken bone it happened on this side so I, I glued that and I went to try and put the engine in again and as I spread the chassis apart, this side snapped off. So now I've got to glue that back. And I can't, uh, I can't weld it because I don't have any welding equipment. The only thing is I've used is uh, cyanoacrylic. So I don't know how this is going to go. I might have to put a metal plate and screw it on the side or something. Okay, I've managed to uh, glue the two pieces, two broken pieces back on. And I've made, um, out of polystyrene sheets, I've laminated, cut and shaped these uh, gussets, whatever you want to call them. 
they fit inside the frame here I've glued that in so hopefully that will be enough to keep it in place because this piece goes at the front you can see how much the frame has to spread to fit in there that's got to fit into the front here so it's about five millimeters on each side so hopefully this is uh, this will be strong enough So I've uh, done all the roller wheels, the cradles, sprocket wheels, uh, I'm going to paint all these separately before, they, before I attach them onto the chassis and I've still got to do the engine as well, put all the details on that, spark plug leads etc and then I can get on with the uh, painting. I have to uh, paint the idler wheels or these roller wheels separately because of the um, rubber rims that go on there. So I'll make it easy to paint them first and then put the rubber rims on, on them. And then I've got to sort of sand it down a bit, make them look a bit warm. Same with the uh, front wheels, I'll paint the uh, hub separately. I spray painted the chassis wheels, roller wheels, front wheels with uh, Tamir's Oxide Red Primer and the engine I've just sprayed with grey primer. The uh, exhaust manifold, the exhaust pipe, they're going to paint them separately. Okay, I, I removed these inner pieces from inside the tyre because I found I couldn't close the uh, inner rim and the hub together. So I've removed these and I've glued the inner rim and the hub together. So now I'll just be able to push that in. And the tyre will still be quite firm. So you don't really need these inner pieces all right I've gone over the chassis and the wheels with the uh, Tamir's dark iron just to break up the red oxide I've done that all over that <coughs> the wheels and the uh, roller wheels Now I'm going to uh, spray chipping fluid and then uh, give it the uh, olive drab mixture and then do some chipping. Alright I've painted the chassis and the wheels. I've done the chipping effect and I've used dark iron to dry brush around the sprockets and the wheels and the cradles here. I don't know if it picks up on the camera there. And just on the edges of the chassis there I've dried brushed the um, dark iron. I haven't done any weathering like uh, pigments or anything yet. I'll wait till I get the engine all finished. I don't know if you can see the 
the red oxide through there. So I'm just showing through a bit. All right. So I'll get the engine all finished and then I'll get the tracks on. And then I'll do more weathering. And then I'll get started on the uh, main body parts. been putting on these vinyl tracks I've got this one on here and I found that they were just a little bit too big so I trimmed this one cut off uh, I think it was like one link here and uh, I've had to I've ended up gluing it basically like on top of the uh, roll here put a bit of glue here on this dry sprocket and the idler wheel 
I've had to glue the uh, bogies so they wouldn't sort of pop out. That's the best I can get it like that. It's still not perfectly um, because if you look at the reference pictures, you'll see it's quite tight fitting uh, track. The trouble with this is it's very uh, thick and rigid. I'll show you the other one on the other side. I haven't done anything. I've only joined it together and put it on. And that's what you end up with. Just bulges out like that. So I've just, I haven't trimmed this one. So I mean you can put glue here, in here and here. But it's still going to look like it's bulging out at the back. So I'm going to have to uh, take this off, cut off one link, and then staple it together and just have the staples underneath there so you won't really see it. And then put the glue on the uh, drive sprocket and up here. I just basically use like a it's a contact adhesive for shoes, leather and rubber. All you have to do is glue it and then put a bit of weight on it and let it dry overnight.
all right that's the end of this video part one of the trumpeter m16 engine and chassis watch out for my next video when i'll do the upper hull and interior thanks for watching see you next time